And again, welcome to Urban Faith. My name is Alan Reynolds. I'm the editor here, and I am so excited for our guest today. We have the one and only Pastor John Hanna, who's with us to talk about his new book on prayer. And so out there in the world, people are just calling it John Hanna's book on prayer. Uh, <laughs> but it is a, an awesome opportunity where he's able to take us through why we should pray, how we should pray, and the importance of prayer in our time. And so I'm excited to have you with us today, Pastor Hannah. Well, Alan, let me just say thank you for allowing me, and I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to speak with you as well as to reach your audience. Absolutely. And so just to get right into it, my first question for you is, why is it that you decided to write this as a book? Your ministry has reached all over the country and around the world, and people have seen you on social media, you know, they're, they're familiar with the things that you've done in that regard. Why did you decide to write this as a book instead of doing it some other way? Yeah, I think that one of the things I wanted to do was literally put it in writing. Um, people see me on social media. People know that I have these amazing prayer meetings. I pray every second and fourth Tuesday at four o'clock in the morning. People from around the world log into that. We do a 12-hour prayer meeting. People from around the world log into that. I do a sunrise service. It, all of that is involved around prayer. And so I've always gotten this, you know, questions about prayer. So I figured, let me put this in writing so people can have a point of reference. Um, let me highlight some things. Let me give some examples of some things so that people can know that this is something that you really should have, especially if you are a believer. Yeah. Um, what I found out is that a lot of believers, not just believers, a lot of churches don't pray. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make it give you a manual should i say yeah that's important that's important work and it's awesome so one of the things you mentioned that i love about this book as i was reading through it was prayer serving is an anchor and you talked about how going through covid and experiencing the pandemic and really our own personal issues people felt like they needed that anchor and yet mm -hmm. a lot of folks aren't praying can you talk about why you see prayer that way is trying to create a stable foundation in the midst of unstable times like we've been. Yeah. If anything I've noticed, Alan, is that the pandemic affected a lot of people. Mm. We are seeing the effects of it. You might not have gotten the virus, but you got the backlash of it. Mm. It's affected families. You've seen people separate. You've seen divorce. You've seen verbal abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, spiritual abuse, even coming from the pulpit. Well, you've seen people go through in their homes, in their finances, on their jobs. You've seen churches struggling on how to connect. And the Bible is very clear. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll basically show you what you need to do. You cannot do this thing on your own. And one of the things that I tried to emphasize in the book is, whatever you decide to do something without consulting your God, you basically say to God, I don't need you. Mm. I have this. And I know God. He'll step back, allow you to hit that wall. And then he's a very present help mm. in the time of trouble. Wow. And so you this book is called Just Pray. Can you talk about why you, why you called it Just Pray as opposed to, you know, a manual mm. on prayer or, you know, five lessons on why just pray? Because... Um, we, I, as a shepherd, as a pastor, I'm always consulted about different things. Mm. And in my mind, I'm saying, just pray about it. <laughs> just pray. People mm. looking for answers right now. People are going to psychics. People are going to get their palms read. People are, they running to prophecies. Um, you run into man expecting man to tell you what God has said. And one of the things that I emphasize in the book is that when Christ died, the veil was rent from the top to the bottom. You don't need another physical high priest. You have access. Mm -hmm. You can boldly go to the throne of grace and get exactly what you need, but it doesn't come without prayer. Alan, the scripture is very clear. You have not 
because you asked not. Mm. You didn't pray about it. So this is how we ended up here. Yeah. That's, Just pray. <laughs> that's so good. And it's so it's so simple. But one of the things you talk about in terms of prayer is really focusing on conversation with God mm -hmm. and not just talking to God. Can you talk a little bit more about how how why you framed it with God instead of not just praying to God or you know right. praying for God to do something? Because even now we are I'm having this conversation with you. Mm. In that conversation with you, it's not just me talking. It's me listening. Mm. And once I listen, then I know what to say next. Conversation with God is not just speaking. There's a time of listening. And he says something. And this is why I, he said in the book when I talk about this is not a drive-by. Mm -hmm. This is a sit down. Let's enjoy the atmosphere. Let's enjoy the ambiance. That's what prayer is. It's not a drive by. It's a sit down. Come now. Let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Let us communicate together. So this is why we say it is a conversation with God because it's not just you talking. It's you sitting. It's you listening. It's you enjoying. It's you basking in his presence. It's you weeping. It's all of that. That's so important. And it, I think it begs a question that especially a lot of young adults struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, how is it that we're able to get into a place where we can take time to listen to God when so much is pulling us and, you know, so many of us aren't taught that? How can we create space to listen to God in prayer and not just uh do the drive by when we need something. Right. One of the things that I've learned is that first of all, we have to kill this notion that we have to get into space, get down on our knees, hold our hands like this, you mm. know, stop. <laughs> stop. Let's 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 throw all of that out of the window. Mm -hmm. Prayer is communication. Prayer mm -hmm. is talking to God. Um, I have days that I can just drive around in silence. And as I'm driving in silence, I'm communicating. Mm. As I'm driving in silence, I'm listening. There are times that I come in the house and I turn nothing on. Uh, Cause I'm, before I came to you, I was sitting downstairs eating a salad in silence. Um, the room that I'm in right now, and this is something that I did. I create spaces that God and I could meet. This is my prayer room in my house. Mm. Um, from the first time that I bought a piece of property, every time I bought a piece of property, I've always created space that he and I can talk, that I can go and sit, I can go and listen. Um, I do my devotions here. I do my prayer meetings here. It's all in this space. And that's what I want to encourage people. Let's get rid of the, uh, the, the, you know, all the notions that you have to lean, you got to close your eyes real tight, got to hold your hands together. Mm. Stop. Talk to him. As you're walking down the street, talk to him. And it's just open dialogue with your God. That's so good. I, I love the intentionality of that, you know, the intentionality of creating that space. I think mm -hmm. really one of the things you're highlighting there. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit more about why we should teach people to pray? Because I think that's something your book really does well. It has that whole section in the middle to just teach us how to pray. Why, why should we teach people how to pray? Because we assume that you know how when you don't. One of the things that bless me, Ellen, is when you read the scripture, when the disciples kept watching Christ leave and come back and do something amazing, leave and come back and do something amazing, they're like, hold on. Teach us mm. how to pray so that we can have the same results that you have. Teach us. And here are the followers of Christ, the disciples saying, we're following you, but we don't know how to talk to the father like you. Mm. So when we read the scriptures, you know, the Lord's prayer, we call it our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's a, he says, when you pray, pray like this. He's not saying, repeat this prayer, basically go in there, Look at the format of that prayer. And that is what the book gives you. Mm -hmm. It gives you A-C-T-S-I. I call it Acts 1. Adoration, confession, thanks, supplication. And then the last thing is intercession. Mm. It, so that's the format. And if I could teach people the format, 
then I know you can get to you can you can definitely get into his presence. There it is. And I, I want to know more about this intercession point. I, and just I love how you share so many stories of how you developed in fair, in, in prayer. Mm-hmm. Was there a point where you felt a call to intercession or how did you get to this yeah. place to to I, intercede? I think that one of the things and I want everyone to hear me and everyone's called to prayer. Mm. Everyone is called to talk to your God. This is why the scripture says men ought to always pray. Men, you should always be seeking your God. You should always be talking to your God. Mm. Um, intercession, if you adoration is when you speak well of him. Thanks is when you thank him for everything he's done. Confession is when you clear the room. Forgive me of everything I've done. Mm. Supplication, this is what I'm asking you to do for me. The last thing is intercession because you can't go to God and be selfish. Mm. Intercession is, God, I'm not just here for you to do something for me, but let me intercede for somebody else. Let me bring up someone else's name. Let me bring up someone else's situation. Let me mention somebody else's name. One of the best things in the book that I think I bring out is when Moses gets in the face of God, when the truth, God's like, you know what? I'm done with them. I'm about to kill them. And the Bible says, and Moses basically began it, got in the seat of the intercessor. The best line that I read, Alan, is, and the Lord relented. Mm-hmm. The Lord changed his mind all because Moses interceded for the children of Israel. That is a powerful thing, which means that you have, you can say to God, God, do me a favor. Hmm. And he'll bless somebody because you ask. Wow. God, do me, bless somebody because you ask. Because you ask. You're the intercessor. My God. Can so in that regard, can you reflect a little bit about how can you keep praying when God may not answer your prayers the way oh, that I you love want? This. <laughs> you know? I love, love, love. Because some people have been taught, pray one time and that's it. If you keep praying about it, then that means that you don't have faith. Mm-hmm. If you study the scripture, that, that's not true. That isn't true. Because Jesus gave the parable of the woman that went before the unjust judge. Mm -hmm. And he says, because she kept coming, because she kept coming. If you say that the scripture, Hannah, which is a powerful revelation too, the Bible says, and the Lord closed the womb of Hannah. In other words, there's nothing wrong with her body. It's just that God shut her down. Mm -hmm. And the only way that her body will be open is through prayer. But it didn't happen from one prayer meeting. Mm. The Bible says every year she would come, she would bring her sacrifice. And then eventually, one year, God did it for her. What if she had done it for one year and never came back? Then we would have never seen Samuel. Wow. Everyone else had a baby, but because of Hannah's consistent prayer life, Hannah birthed history because that's the only person, Samuel, in the Old Testament that hold three positions at one time. You don't just want a baby. Mm. Anybody can have a baby. (laughs) But because of your consistency, I owe you more than what the average person got. Wow. Wow. So it's a perseverance you're saying. If, if, even if you don't see it right now, the perseverance in prayer just allows God to use you in a different way. Delay does not mean denial. Mm. It doesn't. But if you keep going before God, I'm a firm believer that he hears and he answers. That's good. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about you know, one of the things that you mentioned that was really touching to me in the book that you just shared how God showed up, even when your prayers didn't get answered the way you wanted, when your mother passed, you talked Mm -hmm. about that. 
how is it i mean you talked about just how you found purpose and continue to pray in that can you talk a little bit about us who may have lost people or whatever seen seen that kind of thing about how we can persist so grief is the price that you pay for love that is the price when you love someone you don't want to see them suffer you don't want to see them die um my mother was diagnosed with cancer and i prayed i prayed but then the lord said no Mm-hmm. let's go and he took her and I grieved too long mm-hmm. I grieved too long and I prayed that no one ever grieves as long as I grieve and I I had to step back and say okay God where are you in this show me why you did what you did because I couldn't see you when I was angry I couldn't see you when I was disappointed so now show me. My mother died and my sister was 15 years old. My wife and I had to adopt my sister. Mm -hmm. It was mandatory that I get my hands on my sister, Mm -hmm. that my wife get her hands. And as a result of that, my sister is now an amazing woman of God, an amazing mother, an amazing wife. She had to live in our home to see a husband and a wife communicate. She had to live in our home because when she was, my mother, my parents did the best that they could, but God wanted more. Mm -hmm. So the only way, the only way that could happen is that my mother had to go. She was a believer. She was ready to go. You backed it up with scripture. When you look at the story of Naomi and Ruth, Naomi lost husband, two sons, but then she cuffs a young girl by the name of Ruth who then gets to Obed. And if you look at the lineage of that, that is how David is born. Mm. Death has to come for greatness to be birthed. Oh, wow. But you don't get that without prayer. Wow. You have to see it's the missing pieces of the puzzle that only come through prayer. I love that. And I just love, you know, you can tell when you talk to pastors because you're preaching as you're talking, (laughs) you know, (laughs) even as you're telling your story, you're just, you're preaching. It's in you. (laughs) In us. But this is my life. So I hope you hear my passion. Absolutely. One of the other things that you mentioned was the importance of you being mentored in prayer. And you talked about people, you know, especially there was a chapter around Edward Christian, I believe his name was. Come on, Alan, you read the book. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I try, I try to do a little bit of my work. I'm try, I'm you trying did to your work. homework, Alan. <laughs> But why is it that mentorship in prayer is important? We talk about teaching. Is there some importance to being mentored in prayer? Yeah. So Edward Christian was the one when I I, I became a believer. I became born again, saved at the age of 17. He was a man that immediately cuffed me and mentored me and trained me and showed me the scriptures and showed me, you know, he used to quote something. He had, a, he had a Bible study with about, about 17 teenage boys in the basement of the church. And he used to always close Bible study with this. Much prayer, much power. Some prayer, some power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Wow. That was our closing. Every Bible study. Um, I left and went to college and I met an old lady. And that's in the book, which is one of my, I think one of the most hilarious chapters met an old lady by the name of Mother Davis. This old lady met some college students in a grocery store and invited us to her home and basically said, God sent me into you all's lives to teach you how to pray. Mm -hmm. She was the one that when we went to her house, we had shut-ins. She was the one that taught us how to pray for hours. Hours, Alan. Mm -hmm. Like she would say, we're going to pray an hour, read an hour, pray an hour, read it. And I was like, an hour. <laughs> but even Jesus asked the disciples, could you not pray with me one hour? Mm-hmm. So she taught us the realms of prayer, how to get lost in prayer. She taught, taught us how to push in prayer. It's a whole nother 
area. And the best revelation is when Moses goes up on the mountain, Mount Sinai. The children of Israel are at the foot of the mountain. The elders are at the middle of the mountain. But Moses and Joshua get to go up. You can be at the foot, the middle, or the top. Where do you choose to be? Mm. You, you have it flowing out of you, but I feel like people need to hear it. What is that connection between knowing the scripture, having that in you, and being able to have a prayer life? That's yeah, around? Because there's a scripture that says, remind me, mm. bring me to remembrance. Um, if you, here we go again. Um, Jesus is in the wilderness and he's tempted of the devil. And when the devil tempts him, what does Jesus say? It is written. He combats the enemy with the word of God. When you learn to pray the word, when you learn, when you learn to pray and remind God of what he said in his word, because his word cannot return unto him void. One of the things, Alan, that I pray, and that I always have this said to my dying day, that I be a word preacher, hmm. that I be um, steadfast in the word, and that I remind people of the word of God. So that is where the scripture comes from. And that is where the one Edward Christian, he taught me to study the Bible. He taught me to study the scripture and I've learned it. Mm. And it's my life right now. And it's what I push. That's awesome. If you, do you have any encouragement for folks who feel like maybe they can't pray or they can't pray well? right? Because I, people sometimes believe they can't pray. I don't believe that. Can you, can you give some encouragement to them? Can you speak? Can you talk to anyone? Because I can promise you, whoever you're picking up the phone and you're complaining to, God is saying, here I am. Wow. Why don't you bring that same conversation to me? And let's, let's, let's me and you talk about it. Tell me how you honestly feel. Now tell me, what would you like to see me do in that situation? Powerful. Mm. Never feel. One of the things that blessed me, this is good, because I used to feel that way. I used to feel like my prayers are not being heard. I used to feel like, God, I'm doing all this praying, but are, do you hear me? I'm talking to you. And I read the scripture that says that we will be held accountable for every word that come out of our mouths. Hmm. So if I'm being held accountable for every word that comes, that means that you listen to every word that comes out of my mouth. All right, let's go. Mm. Let's talk about it. Another thing that blessed me, Alan, was when the children of Israel were complaining, God said to the children of Israel, told Moses, go back and tell them, I'm going to give them exactly what I heard them say. Mm. There <laughs> we go again. Yeah. You're listening. So I just want to encourage everyone. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't even have to be long. It just needs to be sincere mm. and have an honest conversation with your God without any fluff. And if you don't know, that's what the book is there. I could walk you through this. One of the things that the best compliments that I've gotten is that you literally helped me change my prayer life. Mm. That blessed me more than anything. Absolutely. I mean, as I was working through this, I was just like, I need to <laughs> work through this and learn, you know, get my prayer life stronger, you yeah. know, share this with others because it's so practical. I just yeah. love practical. how practical it is. Is there any piece of practical advice you want to give to folks who are trying to strengthen their prayer life or get into intercession who may have only been able to pray for themselves, who are trying to go to the next place? What what would you do to, to give them some ways they can tap into that? Um, several things that you can do. I love the internet, mm. first of all. Find people who, are, who, who believe in prayer. Mm. Um, find people that point you to God and not to them. Mm. An intercessor or a person is never saying, look at me, here I am. A true intercessor is going to, point you to God. I told someone, I think I have one of the greatest positions because I don't do miracles. Mm. I don't do miracles, but I can point you to the God that does. That's that it. lifts so much. Some people want to be the prophet. People run to you, give me a word. 
you got to give them a word. <laughs> <laughs> they want a word from the Lord. People say, I got the gift of healing. Then put your hands on me. I love my seat as an intercessor. Because mm. my responsibility is only to point you to God. And I say to everyone, he literally waits to hear your voice. You serve a God that is that into you. Mm. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows you're going out and you're coming in. He just wants to know your conversation now. Yeah. He's into you like that. I like that. That reminds us of, again, it's this relational piece that yes. I think so, so many folks who may have been raised around church, but didn't really know God for themselves, heard it in these really strict ways and you make it relational, you know? It is, it is relational. Any parent knows the cry of their children. If it could be a thousand babies crying, but a true parent knows the cry of their child. His ear is not too heavy that it cannot hear you. And his hand is not too short that it cannot save you. So just call out to your God, just pray. So last question, is there anything that you wanna leave that you wanna to say to our audience, to young adults out there, to folks who are trying to get more into prayer, that are trying to uh, learn more about prayer, that you know, maybe struggling with a particular issue, you know, and, and thinking, okay, how do I pray about this thing? Is it, or are there any thoughts from your book? What, yeah. what do you wanna leave us with? In all your ways, never think that nothing is so bad that you can't talk about it. Never feel as if something is so bad that you can't bring it to your God. Um, he knows about it anyway. Mm. He's just waiting to discuss it with you. To every young adult, and I say this with all due respect, give yourself time to build that relationship and give yourself time to learn his voice. That will relieve you of the pressure that it has to happen right now. Because many of the young people, when I look at you, you want it right now. And if you later on, you'll see if you build this relationship, ah, now I know why you didn't give it to me. What now I know why you made me wait. Oh, now I know why you told me no. Um, and then you'll get the revelation that all things work together for the good. So I just want to encourage everyone, get the book. It's, I did my best to make it as simple as I could, because unfortunately, I don't know what kind of world we're in right now that everybody wants to look deep, sound deep, act deep. <laughs> and you, you, you're impressing yourself, mm. but not teaching the lesson. Mm. Christ taught, theologians say that Christ taught at a third to fifth grade level. Mm. That's why he taught in parables, because he wanted to make sure you got it. Mm. I wrote this book to make sure you get it. So that is my prayer, that you just get it and that you build up your relationship with your God. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for being with us, Pastor Hannah. Again, the book is Just Pray. It is available everywhere. It'll be linked here in this article. Um, I'm so grateful to have you here and to just share with us on prayer. Thank you so much. And again, Ellen, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you're you. You're blessing Thank the you. world. Thank you so much. Thank All you. right. Take care. All right.